So hi everyone, welcome along to a little video interview we've got going here. We have the fabulous Katie Mottram joining us from over in the UK today. And uh, it's Katie's morning, it's my evening over this end. So we're here to really talk about Katie's work today. And uh, for those who haven't yet had the pleasure of meeting Katie or coming across what she does, Katie is the author of a book called Mending the Gap, and hopefully we'll hear a little bit about that. Uh, the past director of ISEN, the International Spiritual Emergence Network. Uh, Katie did some wonderful work in really globalizing that initiative and connecting um, spiritual emergence and spiritual emergency type groups, support groups um, around planet Earth. So that is just awesome. And uh, featured in the film Crazy Wise, the uh, documentary film that was done really, um, well, you can tell us more about Crazy Wise, fabulous, fabulous film. And currently, amongst probably many other things, leading the way in the emerging proud movements. Uh, Katie's a real mover and shaker in this area in, in bridging uh, the mental health area with experiences and uh, making things better for people all around. So welcome, Katie, and thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, and I just really would love to help get the word out about what it is you do. So um, could you tell us a bit more about the journey, where you've been, how you got here, and <laughs> what you want us all to know? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I really appreciate you helping to get the word out. I just love connecting with people like you all over the world. It's like, it's so validating for my journey, my own spiritual emergence journey. So maybe if I start there and kind of give a bit of a bit of a background into the springboard of what <laughs> sent me shooting off into this world. Um, yeah, I'd kind of like so many people I interview for the Emerging Proud campaign, kind of always had this knowing as a child that there was something more, you know, there was something deeper going on. I had lots of existential questioning. Who am I? What's life all about? Why am I here? Kind of had this sense of being here for a purpose. So, you know, at school when it was like, it was quite, I was, I was in quite a strict academic school and I just, I wasn't a high achiever. Um, so I just felt really mm, like I didn't really fit in and I tried to fit in. I tried really hard to fit in and I just became quite depressed. Um, and I'd also grown up with, um, a mother who'd had, who, who was a sensitive to, I really get the whole, you know, ancestral lineage. I'm kind of, I feel like I'm third generation of kind of white witch women, um and before my time my my mother's mother and my mother obviously weren't able to speak out so openly about this stuff as we do now so I'm so grateful to be here at this time and connecting with so many people that that can hear this stuff because it's just yeah it's it it would be soul destroying if um, if I couldn't do that. So, yeah, I kind of always had this this sense of knowing and feeling a bit like an alien on Earth. <laughs> I know many people say that, describe that as well. Um, and when I was seventeen, my mum made a really serious suicide attempt, and I kind of switched from child this really kind of quiet sensitive child into sort of stepping into my adulthood and taking control of things um yeah and so, so I kind of threw myself into the mental health world and went to uni and um studied psychology and philosophy and I went to work in the mental health system I just wanted to try and understand what was going on and the more I worked in the system and I just w moved from job to job to job because it's like nothing made sense to me it's like they're missing something really crucial here I just didn't get the biomedical model you know I was going to do my nurse training and I just couldn't go through with it because I didn't agree with a lot of the practices it was like my soul was screaming this is wrong mm. um so I just didn't like the bureaucracy. I used to just go with my human instinct and sit on the floor with patients and I'd get, get into trouble for doing it and things like, like really crazy. It's like, I look back now and think, 
you know what I was doing intuitively was so right but I just had no self-confidence at the time to kind of argue against the system so I just became more and more depressed and feeling like there was something wrong with me and I just didn't get it um, and I became really split from myself I just wore this huge facade um, and that's kind of culminated in my own suicide attempt in 2008 um, after a few kind of difficult years um, of life stuff <laughs> and um, yeah I kind of see that now I look back now and feel like that was my you know the cracking open you know the roomy the roomy phrase of the crack is where the light starts to come in that's like that was my moment and I'm so appreciative for that breakdown now because that set me on my spiritual emergence path and I took up yoga and meditation and a couple of years later I had a very spontaneous um, spiritual awakening during the meditation I was reading Eckhart Tolle the power of now and for the first time ever my thoughts stopped and it was like a freight train of truth and universal consciousness and beautiful love hitting me that I'd kind of always known was there as a child so it was like I was euphoric and experiencing just huge energies um and yet because I'd worked in the mental health system for so long I started to my logical brain started to kind of pathologize myself so I was like there's no way I'm accepting a pathological label of what's happening for me now because I know it's something really meaningful, it's something really beautiful. And so I kind of took myself out of the system and I've been spending the last, yeah, five or six years kind of researching into spiritual emergence. And one of the first things I was lucky enough to get to do was to go to Brazil and, um, visit the spirit of psychiatric hospital out there and see the mediums working with the doctors and one thing that really stands out to me from that trip was they talk about how um mental illness is repressed mediumship and i think there's so much truth in that from you know in the in the western world i think we're so detached from our very natural essence of soul and intuition so yeah, I feel, and ever since, I've just be, feel like I'm, I know you talk in your research about how this kind of initiation helps us to become more of who we really are, and I feel like that's been happening for me over the last few years. I'm just stepping more and more into my truth and speaking my truth, and it's so liberating, and just life is joyful now. Like, it's not easy, but... <laughs> Um, but I'm able to kind of sit with the challenges as growth and yeah I've just done a lot of personal growth over the last few years and I think really emerging myself in the spiritual emergence world and volunteering on the UK network for a while and then helping to found ISEN and just recently setting up the Emerging Power campaign has just been so validating for my journey because I've met so many amazing people around the world you know when it first happened to me I felt so as many people so isolated and like what on earth is going on switching between the very spiritual knowing of this is exactly who I am and why I'm here on planet earth to like plunging into the depths of despair and kind of my human um disbelief really about you know I'm just crazy <laughs> brushing it away so yeah really kind of recognizing that duality pendulum swing between what would be termed as bipolar but what I see is you know the split between um the spiritual self and the human self and the polarities and that's kind of what my book is based on really is mending mending the gap between those two cells but also so mending the gap inside ourselves but also mending the gap externally between spirituality and mental health the mental health world but, but society as a whole I think really yeah so that's that's where my passion comes from yeah so true it's um i find that it's that piece after the experiences you know crashing back down to the realities of planet earth and being uh someone who's here day to day living life eating food interacting with people having to make a living how does one bridge all of that um and especially after certain realizations have happened 
um, to then walk forward in a way that feels right um, and in alignment and, and where you can still feel whole. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge, that, that challenge. Yeah, such a challenge I think that's been the biggest challenge for me of integration and I've I've not managed it well you know I've not been able to earn enough money and had to borrow money from my parents who have been amazing actually and yeah it's it's interesting because it's like the compassion that I've been able to grow over the last few years as well you know kind of really delving into my shadow and my anger around all of that to kind of coming through with more compassion as well to myself and and to other people that maybe don't understand yet um and able to be a little more quiet than i used to be about it i kind of look back and cringe sometimes you know part of the journey is like oh my gosh that messiah complex part when you feel like you've got this really important message to bring out into the world and then the realization that actually yeah i'm just one of millions as we all have you know and it's like yeah healing healing humanity and kind of being the consciousness that the universe is I think that's it's like a huge relief I think to me to now realize like oh I'm just a tiny piece of the puzzle and you know we're all we are all individually god consciousness whatever you want to call it creating the the new earth um and it's beautiful and that's why i love collaborating so much and meeting people like you nicole who are doing this work it's like yay it's another piece of the puzzle <laughs> we're all coming together <laughs> and i agree with you so much finding that balance between the enormity of one's experience and the sense of oh my goodness this is like the most important thing ever thing ever with being an ordinary person having gone through something extraordinary like so many other ordinary people that are doing that that humility that comes along with um being a part of the much bigger picture uh yeah definitely an important piece on the journey <laughs> so necessary <laughs> yeah yes yeah wow so that brings us to now katie and so right now what is most alive for you mm. most alive well the emerging power campaign is my baby my passion so um yeah it started in october 2016 and i was living out in spain i kind of i knew that i needed to take myself away from society for a while and really align with myself and i was living on my own kind of in the spanish mountains and connecting with nature and just listening really and i was guided um i was guided to start um a human rights campaign really and that sounds like oh my god i mean i get these guidances and it's like oh my god really like really <laughs> um, but i tend to just go for things now before my human doubts kick in so yeah um so it's it's a grassroots social movement emerging proud and it's it's built on you know the black rights movement the gay rights movement i wanted to provide a platform for people who felt that their voices were being oppressed that they're i wanted to kind of add something to the new paradigm in mental health the wonderful work that's being done you know with the move away from the biomedical model into more of a biopsychosocial model and add the spiritual because i don't think there's a lot yet around you know really bringing that integral holistic model um with the four elements i don't i don't think spirituality is as as deemed as important as the biomet bio um, psychosocial um, at the moment particularly not in the uk anyway um so yeah i wanted to provide this platform for people who've been through a spiritual emergence process and saw their who had maybe been pathologized but saw it as something much bigger saw it as a as a spiritual emergence process and a transformation that had made them into somebody um kind of beyond who they were before so they'd seen it as a blessing rather than an illness meaning they were broken mm. and um 
it took off. It just, I think because I'd got kind of an international network anyway with ISEN, um, I started to blog and I started to invite people to share their stories and so many people from around their world wanted to share their stories, which was beautiful. And I'm so, so, so grateful to everybody that has dared to step out and share their stories because it's hard, you know, it's really challenging to do that and it's part of the journey isn't it to kind of have your voice heard and risk the repercussions of that so yeah it took off and I started to interview people too about their stories and then I really wanted to bring this into somehow education within the mental health field and people were saying this needs to be a film and I was going no idea how to make a film (laughs) and then I reconnected with a friend who was a documentary maker who basically te- sent me a paper template and said this is what this is how you create a film basically and it was right. like every tenth of a second like what's on the screen what's being said and I was just like oh my goodness <laughs> so I just plunged myself into that 24 7 for six I think it took nine months um and I pieced together wow all of the interviews that I'd done and kind of took made a storyline um of what the spiritual emergence process looks like how it's initiated what kind of things people experienced what helped and how they felt that their lives had been transformed and launched that film on May 12th last year um the first international emerging proud day and 12 countries hosted an event um And yeah, we had open spaces um, to look at. So every country that hosted an event looked at the question, um, what do we need in society to make it safer to talk about these human transformation experiences, mental illness, whatever you want to call it. Um, And every single country, this is what I loved, transculturally said the same thing. They said, we need validation, we need safe spaces where people can go in community to talk about their experiences and journey through and kind of be held for their own inner um inner healer to to come out um and with peers with peers alongside peers who had been through this process before so it was beautiful because you know I'd got Africa involved, Southern America was involved, Australia, Europe, um, US, and yeah, it was. I, everybody said the same thing, and I was just like, "Wow, this is so incredible!" So um, I'm I was lucky enough to be introduced to um, a guy who seed funded a project that I called the Emerging Kind, and we're training peers to hold safe spaces. Mm. for people in the community who are going through this process and the latest is that we are holding a second International Emerging Proud Day on the 12th of May this year and we have events again happening all around the world and it's slightly differently this year I wanted to um, firstly take some pressure off myself because it's huge huge task to kind of try and coordinate this stuff but people have stepped up and I'm so grateful you know people are volunteering in countries all around the world who've been involved in the movement um, to hold events called So Me and they're more about getting this word out into the public arena so the public will be invited to spaces where volunteers will share their stories um, of emergence, of transformation um, in in chat rooms. So it's based on social media so that we have profiles on the wall. Everyone will have a profile who's volunteering to share their stories. There's a chat room so the public can come along and kind of think, oh, I'm really interested in asking that person more about their experience, invite them into the chat room. And then once they've had that conversation they'll be invited to put their reflections onto a message board so the idea is at the end of that day there'll be hundreds of reflections of what people got from those conversations Mm. um, at every event throughout the world which i'll then collect and collate into a report which um, we're hoping to have academically published. So I'm really trying to get this more recognised. And ultimately, 
you know, I mean, I, I like to dream big, as you know, <laughs> Do you know Nicole. <laughs> human right we need a new human right around um altered states of consciousness the the ability for people to have these experiences and not be pathologized Mm -hmm. and to have places to go where they can be held and be able to tap into what's happening and and sit with their process without being medicated and and sometimes it's necessary i Mm -hmm. totally and that I totally think we still need crisis care but you know when this journey is halted by pathology and medication it's it just stops it just stops the emergence journey so yeah that's that's my aim and I'm connected with a, an, an amazing woman who's got links with the UN who's really wanting to create this human right as well like I I wouldn't have the first clue in how to go about that that's the beauty of collaboration it's like we're, we're in conversation and she's got those links so who knows who knows where well what we can do together that's that's what I love about this movement it's nothing it's nothing when we're on our own it could be everything when we do it all together yeah yeah wow so much there so much (laughs) and yeah it's it's huge really so okay practically speaking may 12 is coming up uh how can people get involved in all of this there's uh, a lot of moving pieces uh there are events happening around the place um yeah 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 so there's one happening in australia and brisbane um yeah we've got events in canada a couple in event in america we've got them around europe south america so um i've recently blogged actually and listed every venue that's right so we'll put the link to that below there somewhere yeah wonderful if we put that blog down there and i'm going to also um create a page on the emerging proud website where people can just click on that and find updates on where to who to contact for each event where to go you know it might be too late to volunteer now it's not long it's we've not got long now it's like oh my gosh the time is going so quickly but i'm sure you know if you want to if you want to go along and share your story there might be space for that or please just go along and support the organizers go to an event speak with people that have had experiences and put your reflections on the message board that is my main aim really is to collate as many reflections from the day as possible so we can show how necessary and valid this is for people who who is this for katie who is this ideally uh, these events for who is it for? It's for people who may be feeling isolated, misunderstood, people who might be kind of going through difficult processes that have been pathologized and, you know, they don't know where to go to get support. Um, it's for the general public as well to kind of open this up and normalize this stuff. Um, I'm luckily um, connected with somebody locally here who's linked in with the press. So we've got we've got the media coming along to our day in Norwich. So Great. yeah, my, my aim is really for the Emerging Proud is to normalise this. Um, and you know, we we know that the current biomedical model in psychiatry isn't working. More and more people are becoming unwell and being distressed and the suicide rate is going up it's like that's that's ultimately what this is for it's to try and save lives really you know I was suicidal because I had no idea what the hell was going on with me and just felt so isolated and misunderstood so it's for anybody out there that might be going through that um, Mm. now so important that we have these spaces uh, for people mm-hmm. what about if people can't get to one of these events uh, but what you're saying here has really resonated yeah um okay so I'm going to and this is new news actually I haven't Ooh. blogged about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make the emerging proud film free to watch online from the 12th of May onwards because it's just you know I'm I'm not doing this to make money it doesn't make money um I just want to get this message out there and if it can help somebody then 
I just want it to go out into the world. So, yeah, from the 12th of May, I'm just going to make the film free to watch online and hope that it can be shown in mental health facilities with the staff and maybe, you know, yeah, um, if, if clinicians can see it and maybe expand their perception of what's going on for people and open up to being more educated around this then. And it's worth, it's been worth the blood, sweat and tears, <laughs> many the tears. for nine months of birthing and <laughs> yeah. et cetera. Yeah, that's, that's, that's wow. Bless you, that. Katie, for that. And, mm. uh, you know, I, I, I would highly suggest you put a little give donation button there at least so that those who financially want to say thank you for that gift can, can do so. Uh, for anyone who hasn't it? seen it, for anyone who hasn't seen the uh, the emerging crowd movie yet you know I saw it just the other day and I really enjoyed I mean one obviously hearing people's stories always um, there's always something to uh, relate to to gain from hearing stories but what I really loved with was, was the weaving um, through it how there's a process that emerges uh, through mm. through uh, the watching of it and um, it's a very archetypal you know, thread <laughs> that seems to go through uh, what it is to be an experiencer. And uh, certainly I would highly recommend, you know, anyone who is interested in, in these experiences and, of course, people who have had the experiences um, and, and, as Katie's saying, you know, want somewhere to connect with um, and understand more deeply. It's, it's a great resource. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, just to just to let people know as well, it's it's you know it's not a big epic film. There was no funding, so it's it's really amateurish. Um, but I hope you know it's emotive enough to get the message out there. That's kind of what it was about. So yeah, and thank you for what you're doing too. You know, it's it's so necessary to have research in this field, and I feel so supported by you guys that are doing that. Um, and your online sharing groups too. I st I'm amazed by how many are suddenly emerging. It's like, yeah. like I said before, we're all tapping into the same conscious stream of what's necessary. Yeah. And it's like, yay, there's all these groups starting to emerge. Mushroom. <laughs> so, Katie, as we're wrapping up, uh, are there any last pieces that you that you wish, wish to share uh, with folks? Uh, um I I suppose if anybody would like is listening and feeling that they resonate with this and they would like to join the Emerging Crowd campaign and speak out about your story, please feel free to contact me via the website and we can certainly look at including your blog. Um, please go along to an event if there's one happening near you um, on the 12th of May. And yeah, I just want to say thank you really to the whole community for your support of me and this movement and recognition of its importance. Um, yeah, it's been so vital in my own journey and I feel like I'm kind of coming full circle back to my human self now and really trying to integrate this into work and there's a possibility that I might be going back to work in the system actually um, so it feels almost like this, the journey is complete now yeah. um, so I'm coming back in as the person I was supposed to be as my authentic self and I will not I would just be really aware of maintaining that now and not kind of getting sucked back out of myself um, so yeah maintaining the integrity um, because I know that that's the only way to kind of make change and, and help people um, so yeah I think that's that's all mm. thank you so much for this opportunity Nicole Katie thank you for sharing your story and everything you've been involved in and with and are continuing to do um, I see you as one of the torch bearers you know walking forward bravely and boldly which really helps other people uh, share as well their stories and, uh, and it, it helps to create space and give language um, to folks who, 
really are feeling like that's something that they want to be part of too. So thank you. And uh, so folks, go out, be a part however you can. May 12 it was, is that right? May 12, Emerging Proud, hashtag Emerging Proud Movement. Go check it out. And uh, awesome. We will see you around the interwaves, Katie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm omnipresent, I think. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, great to see you again. Okay. Bye, bye. folks. Bye. <laughs>